Prime. Let's get it together. Education. Let's get it together. Marriage. Let's get it together. Politics. Let's get it together. Full circle. Poverty. Let's get it together. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Full Circle Podcast Show. Hey. Episode number two. I am Daryl McCullough, along with A. Whitney Petty, who's joined us from the Windy City of Chicago. Hey, hey, glad to be here. Glad to be here. (laughs) And as always, we are joined by the lovely and talented Carmen Miller. Hello, hello. Hey. So, um, before we get ready to go into the show, uh, how are we doing on current events? What's going on in your world? You know what? Um, actually, I wanted to talk about a couple of things that have been going on. Um, we had recently the terrorist attacks that have been in Paris, and before that, earlier in the year in Kenya. And just like within the last couple of days, Here in America, we've been dealing with a level of terrorism, um, the Planned Parenthood bombing in Colorado, and some shootings in Chicago that... Exactly. When we look at this thing, and we're looking at it, just like we talked about last week, uh, the religion and that kind of thing, extremism is a real problem. When we're looking at anything, extremism is a horrible problem. There is no religion... There is no God that would allow harm on his creation. So if you are involved in some sort of sect or whatever that calls for some sort of destruction to human life, life in general, that's not God. That's not. It's just simply not. But I, and, and, I, and I often wonder that how they get that mindset that killing in in the name of religion that's crazy is somehow you know what they should be doing now and you know what here's a here's the thing it's a work belief system you know a lot of people go into these type of situations looking for something and some charismatic leader or whatever will cause them to you know be pulled to the wrong direction because it's like you know they're vulnerable or, or, or malleable in their mindset. My thing is, even with the, the Planned Parenthood, they killed an officer of the law. Three people lost their lives. They killed an officer of the law. Right. I mean, the church bombing. Right, exactly. Earlier this year. Yeah. You're killing people in the name of what? To prove what? To persuade what point? It's not right. It's right. simply not right, and it's not cool. It- I mean... But, but, you know, some things we have to look at, too, is people relate terrorism to the Middle East. That's not always the case. Right. We have terrorism, homegrown terrorism. And so we, have to, look at, we have to look at that. And if you look at the numbers, the percentage is more higher for domestic terrorism, terrorism than it is for um, overseas. So, I'm just you, telling you, I mean, when we, when, if we're going to call this thing terrorists, if you're going to call, you know, extremism, extremism, then call it all out. I mean, the KKK are extreme exactly, terrorists. Exactly. exactly. You know? the, the, the gangs, the gangs the in gangs Chicago, are terrorists. the gangs in, in uh, California, they're terrorists. They're terrorists. They're terrorists. Right. You're terrorizing a community. Ex- that's what it is. And it's that's not okay. It is. It's simply not okay. Right. Hmm. Yep. Got it. Now, what was, what's going on in Chicago? You know, it it's it's what's going on in the United States. This this police officer killed a seventeen year old just with uh, um, extreme force, more force than he needed. You know, shot the kid sixteen times. He's walking away. Walking, I saw the video. Walk, right, walking away. Um, he had the kid had a knife on him. Uh-huh. So my thing, my brother's a, a captain for the Detroit Police, Conway Petty, Captain Petty, and so we talked and we discussed it. Their job is not to wound. Right. Their job they shoot to kill. They do. is 
to shoot to kill. I, my, my whole family is police officers right. in Detroit and okay. here. In, my right. father uh, uh, just recently retired here in Toledo. Um, but yeah, they, they're taught to shoot to right. kill. But at the same time, this boy was walking away and posed right. no threat. What do you, what, what's the line that we draw? The thing is, it's, it's your discretion. Really? It's a police officer's discretion to know, okay, is he a threat to me? Is he a threat to anyone else? The problem I have with this situation in Chicago was this guy was the only one that shot. It was other police officers there. The only one that shot. And the street, as I, the way I saw it, the street was empty as he was walking away. As he was walking away, it was two police cars. The other officers did not shoot. Yeah. He unloaded his whole clip. Wow. I don't want to, and I don't want to get into, you know, the habit of, or the, the way of like adjudicating something here, but what is it that let's, let's dig into kind of like the, 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 um, the mindset or the feeling of the people, a lot of people, you know, villainize the black lives matter right. um, movement or whatever. That's fine. I think that one of the things that we've missed the mark on is we've missed the mark on making the point that Black Lives Matter is not an exclusive movement. It's not saying only Black Lives Matter, right. but it's saying Black Lives Matter also. Also, that's the key word. Yeah. Also, and it's funny you said that because I had a coworker come up to me Friday and ask me. He said, "What is this thing about Black Lives Matter?" And you know, I guess something happened in Minnesota. Hmm, yeah. And and I guess you know. The guy was in the wrong mm -hmm. that they shot. But I said, that's only one isolated incident. I said, you have to look at the whole the big picture. picture. I mean, you know, well, the thing is, when we look at these kinds of things, you know, a, a lot of my friends will ask, you know, well, why do you guys make a big deal about, you know, when something happens? These right. things happen in right. every race to everyone right. or whatever, what have you. But disproportionately. Right. They happen in our communities. And also, when they happen, there's a level of justice that we just simply don't get. Exactly. You know, nine times out of ten, if Tyrone, uh, Jamar, or so-and-so does a right. crime, they'll be convicted immediately. Right. Whereas if Officer Bob does a crime towards Jamal, Tyrone, whoever, right. there's a level of justice that doesn't exist for him. Right. Well, you know what I say. This is what I say. Detroit had a, uh, a situation where you had to be a resident of the state, mm -hmm. not the state, I'm sorry, city. the city, I know, to be an a officer. Police, they changed that. Did they? Yeah, they changed that. So now, my thing is this. So now you have a lot of people coming in that don't live in know the, community. the communities. That's right. This That's, is my thing with yeah. that. If you're policing a community, my opinion, you, you should, should live, live in, in that community. community. You should, That's, that's what I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And the only reason I say that is because, you know, when people, when you know the people, right. there's they're, a trust level. My dad, um, he was a Detroit police officer back in the day. Right. Okay. Back in them young boys incorporated days, right. pony down that's and when, all that's when, that's when my brother started <laughs> in 77. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. He was, he, 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 um, we lived in the community. We, we were right there in the trenches or whatever, right. what have you. But how we lived in the, in the six and there was this party store that was across the street. From the uh, precinct, right? And uh, oh, six what precinct six? The six, you know okay. what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, so check this out. So my mama got mugged at the party store. Right. My dad and my uncle were on duty. <laughs> oh really? Okay. All uh, right. Right. Wow. Uh, this is right. back in the day before cell phones. So right. she steady. If she went into the store to call somebody, you know, to you know, call the precinct right. or whatever. She's like, y'all jokers across the street and right. this right. <laughs> so right. and so hit me Just, in the head with right. my purse. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, but you know what? It's kind of it's it's just that. There, there is a need for community-based policing. I think right. that that would shift the tide in a place like Baltimore. Baltimore, D Detroit, Chicago. But the thing about Detroit, it's not as big as Chicago. Right. So I don't know if you can do it in the cities or different. It's not set up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like Detroit. Chicago is is a microcosm of the country itself. Right. Exactly. exactly. Chicago is is a mini U.S. It, so it, yes. it's kind of like your your. You'd almost have to, you know, police the demographic itself, or or train these guys correctly. That's it. Well, to to police certain areas. Now that's yeah. what I want to reflect on as far as the training, and um, before we go to to Paris and Kenya and things like that. But um, I want to word 
get things together so that I'm, I'm not labeled as an out of touch black man. But that's okay though. If that's what you are, that's uh, what talk, you are. Talk about it. Talk, talk about it. The first yeah. thing is every time I see these situations where these shootings take place, yeah. the first thing I think of is why. What were they doing? Well, we think the same thing. Okay. We think the same thing. Not the policemen. No, we think both sides. We think the same thing. And then also, because this magnifying glass is on all these shootings, if I was a captain or whoever, you know, right. th listen, guys, be careful out there. Uh, people are watching. Cell phones are everywhere. I don't understand how policemen are still doing these uh, excessive shootings. Because it's a culture. They've mm, been it doing is. it. It really is a culture. You, you, you know, you know, hey. But but what but was you, the repercussions of this with this uh, policeman? Is he they, he's they, actually they, indicted for, uh, for first murder. degree first murder. First degree murder. Okay. Right. So, so, but I, it's I, taken a year. It to took get a year. The exactly. That, that's a good point. It took a year. But the thing is, it's a culture. And, and believe me, my brother's been a police officer for going on 40 years. So I'm not against that side. Absolutely not. You know, I'm just for what's right. You know, right. and he's. What, what was this with this guy looking at the policeman? Wasn't did that was that? that was probably the protest. And let's go to that. I don't. I, I think it should be peaceful. I don't think it should be staring someone down. But at this point, how do you fix the problem when it keeps happening there is over a, and over? There is an adversarial relationship that's been set up not only in the culture, but also in the media. Right. It sells papers. Uh, it, yes, it, I it agree. It feeds the beast. I agree. Um, I will also say this in terms of what goes on, you know, street level politics as far as that. Um, when you look at what's going on as far as like, let's say from the police captain standpoint, this, that, and the other, training is a necessary, mm -hmm. number one. Here's the thing, what the larger society should realize is that we want safe communities too, you know? We don't want Pookie and Darnell the dope dealer on our corners. Right. However, comma, there's a complicity when our neighborhoods aren't policed A, correctly and consistently, and that when they finally do come in, they come in with, you know, the, the gangbusters and right. the, the boots and all of that, you know, and, and really like, you know, aggressively police in those neighborhoods. What I think you were uh, speaking to earlier, the community policing right. aspect would right. make a huge difference if these are people who we grow to trust and see on a daily basis mm. outside of just the, you know, policing aspect. Okay. But, but think, but think about this too. My brother started at 18. Mm. These, these police officers that come into the uh, Academy, they're 18, 19, 20. Yeah. Some come from over in Iraq from the war. They come in. And the thing that is at, at 18, what did I know at 18? What did I know at 20? I mean, in terms of... And you're given a gun, a badge, and authority. A gun, a badge and authority. In, in a, yeah. And, and if and, you put him, as we were talking on the drive here, if you put that officer in that area and you brought up Pookie and Darnell... Right. I'm new. How am I supposed to know How can you distinguish Pookie between... That's where the good? training comes right, in. Right, right, right. That's where the training... And when I see them... As I said, when we were driving, because Pookie here, could be I'm a gonna, college student, I'm right? Run the Darnell exactly. could be exactly. exactly. You know, Dar Darnell could be a businessman. Right. You, right. you see what I'm saying? Right. But this, you know, that mentality and that stereotyping—that's been done exactly. in the larger media. Exactly. It gives people that preconceived notion when they go into the neighborhood. Number one, as opposed to treating everyone at face value okay. until and, and you see you are absolutely correct because if if you look at the news and look at all of these uh cable channels and that's what you see somebody with braids what's the funny thing about it when they killed the guy um i think it was brown was mm. that brown mike brown mike brown they had him looking like a thug they had him mm. on the news when they showed this guy from chicago they had him in his cap and gown mm. so it was a big mess about you know when you show these guys as thugs but they graduated from from high school. They can look presentable. Yeah. And so they they made it. They 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 and, did that. You know. But but at the same time, you know, you you also have the I'll, I'll play devil's advocate right. here, where you have the pictures of a Dylan Ruth, and I'm sure they could have found some you know wonderful happy holiday pictures where he was fun and right. all of that, and he looks deranged in every picture that they show. Right. But you uh, know. So right. and, I mean, it's kind of like that balance. You got to right. find that balance. No, I have you on that. But a lot of times you see. If, if you know what I'm saying, you'll yeah, see, you. you'll see uh, 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 
if they show a white kid, he may be in a in a tie or he may be in a cap and gown. I'm not saying it's every right, inf- right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm saying it's sometimes you, these guys, you look at them and they're looking like they're straight out of uh, jail. They're taking straight a out of cough, dude. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. My son came through the house uh, the other day at dinner, and he had he had a little hoodie on, you know, and he had the hood up. He was, right. and I said, if you don't take that thing down. I don't ever want to see that. But who made that? Who made that? Who made bad? that a bad thing? Well, yeah, who made it that yeah. a bad thing? That's I, I, but, what I'm but, saying. But you know what? It's like this: if I'm a policeman and I know what I'm looking for, you can best believe my children will be the polar opposite of that. You don't. You you have the right to dress the way that you want to. Okay, that's right. fine. Right. But be prepared for the repercussions that come with that. However, now, comma. I, know that I was going to say saying that 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 uh, go on, go on. As I say, however, comma. Being the polar opposite doesn't exclude you from the discrimination. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. I have two sons that are that are polar opposites. One that dresses very urban, and one that dresses very straight laced. And both of them have experiences, you know, with law enforcement detaining them. So for absolutely no reason, they both live. Well, in my oldest lives in Brooklyn, and my younger son lives in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it's you can try that as a deterrent. And while it very well may be in certain cases, it's not always a deterrent. But, but, I, I understand. But, I, I, I told you I was stopped. I was I had a suit and tie on, right. and I was like, "What? What did I do?" You but, know what but I mean? you know what? Prior to Trayvon Martin, what was wrong with the hoodie? Prior to him, that's prior to Trayvon Martin, came. skaters wore hoodies. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, go to a football game. Go to the UM game against Ohio. Couple See of, who has a hoodie on. I, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> they all have them on. I agree. I agree. And so the media, to me, the media makes that a bad thing. And that's why I was saying about the picture. You put this picture up with a hoodie on, yeah. and automatically, once that happened, hoodies are bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I agree. You know? I agree. Now, what you, what, now just a brief look. So what, what you got for um, Paris and Kenya? I just want to issue a, our, our heartfelt condolences to those who have lost all over the world, specifically in Paris and in Kenya, due to terrorist action, be vigilant, but do not allow hate, fear, or anything that causes us to be less humane to one another to win. Because that's the goal of a terrorist, is to instill so much fear that we become exactly what we hate. Exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Evil is evil no matter what. I don't care how you dress it up. I don't care how you disguise it. And when you take life, that's evil. Right. Okay. okay. Um, any other points before we move on? How is everybody's Thanksgiving? I right. know we're in the holiday season. We're ushering in the holiday season. And this doesn't sound very holiday-ish, but let's shift gears. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. You know what? For me, it was just it's glad. it was great to be back home. You know okay, who who brought a patty pie to to the uh, dinner? <laughs> hey, look, you know I'm what? Patty, I love you. I love Miss Patty. Don't play. But you know what? I, it's funny because I went to I went to Walmart's yesterday. Mm. Sold out. The sign was Patty I've never Pie. Sold out. I never. I, I go to Walmart all the time. I've never even seen a display. It was okay. So Patty Labelle has sweet potato pies that she's marketed. Okay, and. I don't know if Patty is in the back cooking them. Um, no, that's what, that's <laughs> no, what I'm saying. she ain't making them. Right. <laughs> so there is this. She made the the the. There was a viral video that went out. Mm-hmm. Very funny. I hilarious. thought that was hilarious. A woman. No, it no, sounds it's a guy. like one. I thought it was a woman, and no. then somebody said he. And I he actually he. spent. He actually spent. Uh, Thanksgiving with, with Patty. Patty LaBelle. Yeah. That is yep. amazing. And but she it, marketed... But it was, I think it was his birthday, too, because she was singing Happy Birthday right, or something. Right, right. Right. So she marketed these pies, and they flew off the shelves. They sold like 5 million freaking pies. Yes. Wow. It's re- in like a weekend or some something crazy like that. No, if I brought that to my family, I mean, they would. They, it wouldn't go down too well. Why? What oh. does it have to be? Dolly Parton pies? No, it's got to I'm know. just saying, man. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm just hey, saying. But you what? know what, though? If I, <laughs> you know what I would do? Okay, what you, you, got, that? What you got? Black people do sweet potato pies. If I was somebody white in that type of thing, yeah, I would do pumpkin pies. Quit playing. That's marketing. You, Stop but, it. But, but who, Stop. Would, who would have to make it for you to take, like I said, Dolly Parton? Who? 
No, I'm saying Laura I Bush. Can't, no, what? Stop what we playing. got? <laughs> Stop. Grandma's recipe. It would have to be for someone. My mom making sweet potato right. pies, and I brought home. No, it's like an insult. Like it your would pie be. isn't good. No way. Right. No that, way. Now, now I know that there are people who like. This is serious. When right. you talk about sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie is serious, honey. That you can't just bring like a manufactured, you know, off the shelf yeah. pie. Made, made, you know, it like it. The crust got to be burnt a little. It's got to be burnt a little, <laughs> a little bit. bit. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but you know, the thing about it is, and somebody was saying something about the pies, and I'm thinking, you know, Patty probably made the first, you know, couple, but now they're they're production type pies. Well, yeah. Well, here's you know? the thing: it's like marketing genius of the internet itself. The they were Patty's probably had pies maybe like six months out of the year right. already. Right. But having this guy so close to um, Thanksgiving, you know, give it gave it that boost because right. it's like. The video went viral, Ooh. so every guy ran out and did like a little patty pie taste right. test. I saw like seven of them in my timeline on Facebook. It was crazy. Now, have you either? N neither of you have even tried. No, that would be blasphemous. Right. <laughs> wow. I love you, Patty, but you're gonna have to cook me the pie. I'm gonna have to watch you in that's, the kitchen. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Not off the production line, Patty. We need them straight from you. What's the rule? You can't <laughs> eat. Everybody's <laughs> cooking. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Exactly. Well, well, well that, that's funny. That, that that I don't understand that. <laughs> if, if you come in with a pie, cake, or whatever, I'm going to eat it. I really? don't understand. Now listen. <laughs> a, a friend made a, a cake, a lemon pound cake. Mm -hmm. I brought it home. The friend gave me the cake. I brought it home. And my wife won't eat it. And I'm like, why won't you eat the cake? What difference does it make? Because she don't know if her kitchen clean. What difference? <laughs> that, but, you know, a lot of people like that. They won't eat because they don't, you know, if they see somebody and they see them daily, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, that person's not too clean. They won't They won't eat, you know? <laughs> wow. I think that's. I think that might be a us thing because I, I do you, that. <laughs> right, right. I think I do that. Well, hey. I'll tell you what. So we're going to keep moving. Um, uh what we do here for the Phil Circle Podcast, whenever we have a guest, we let the guests pick our topics. We have a, 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 a large list of topics, and we let the guests pick the topic that they want us to talk about. And today, who will be joining us in a few minutes is Michael Dean from the uh, podcast Juice.net. And the topic that he wanted us to discuss was simply the best, your personal top five favorite music guest Ooh. music of all time and um i thought that was cool and he it, this is cool for him because he's all into music and anything related to prince and i'll get into that later nice. on in the show but uh simply the best your top five favorite musical guest of all time what you got i i'm the musician i'll let you guys start man you know what go ahead i'm gonna let daryl go here let me let me go ahead daryl Get yours, because okay. I know Prince is in there somewhere. Why, why you got it? You, you know what? And I'm you just, just remind, you, I forgot. I forgot. You just reminded me. I forgot. I forgot to bring my Prince puppet. Oh, from Purple. I, I actually have the puppet. The little marionette deal. I, have the, I, I love have it. That. I have uh, the uh, guitars. Matter. You know what I'm gonna do? I'll send it to Eric, and I'll take a picture. So he can put it in the video. Do nice. you have the ruffle shirts and the little boots? I had. I didn't have boots. You know, I wear a size sixteen. Those you couldn't well, get it those. Wasn't like it wasn't. It was a different size last week. Was it like? Wait, no, it was sixteen. It was 16. Okay. Uh, uh, but okay, I had. I had, okay, cool. okay, I had okay. it all on one side. I had it all. Well, I'm a ten and a half since I didn't even mention the, the shoes. I'm a ten and a half, eleven sometimes. So I don't know what that means. You know so what I'm on my list, I got yes. Number one would be Prince. I mean, growing up and everything, just. Uh, uh, finding out how to be erotic and sexual and loud nice. and rambunctious and everything Prince else. Didn't, is that he, he laid taught the foundation? You? Is, I'm did gonna, he? I'm gonna sip my no, coffee. No, sip that. that coffee because I'm about to sip <laughs> okay, mine too. I got, I got Prince. <laughs> hey, then, I'm gonna hold it with two hands. Uh, the other one is now I'm basing this off of okay. albums, okay. off of uh, longevity, everything. Gotcha. Steely Dan. Gotcha. I'm a huge Steely Dan fan. Nice. Anytime Steely Dan. They're in town. I am. I'm there. You know. Nice. So uh, I got everything by Prince. I got everything by Steely Dan. Uh, even their solo projects. Donald mm -hmm. Fagan, Walter Becker. I love. Oh, all I that. love Donald Fagan. Yeah. Um, also, another person. It would be Sade. However, I got a problem with her 
Why? What does Sade do to you? I got a with her popping in and out, <sighs> and then we all act like they're Patty Labelle sweet potato pies. Listen, <laughs> she pops in, and then every okay, twenty years, it, every fifteen you know, years, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't but, understand that. But, but she's amazing. Good run Who though. Does that? Yeah, Who does they that? all do that. Patty did it. Patty didn't come back but until the nineties. That's called longevity, right? That's, that's what quality it is. music. Quality music stands the test of time, yep. no matter what. You hadn't had a Sade album, and you were fainting for one. Yep, weren't you? But that's smart marketing. And it's awesome. It's, it, it really is. And not only that, she's such a purist. She wasn't ready to make a record until she had a record to make right. a good one, not just throwing out music just to have sound out there. Well, I, I agree with that. But because of that, she's not on my list. <gasps> and I put Erica Badu there. Love her. I like Erica Badu. I may not be a big fan of her baby mama drama and her lifestyle. Okay. But besides <laughs> that, I really enjoy her music and I love how she changes. Like sometimes you'll be listening to a song and you'll think, is this the same song? Because mm -hmm. it will go into a mm -hmm. crescendo into mm -hmm. another part. I love her. I love that. I'm a big fan of her music. Number four would be Stevie Wonder. Mm. I got everything Stevie Wonder put out. Um, legend. Um, Absolutely legendary. Awesome. Um, and lastly, uh, Miles Davis. Mm. I'm a huge jazz fan. I love Miles Davis. My my son's middle name is Miles. Nice. Miles Davis. Wow. Nice. Um, and, you know, just a big, huge fan. Now, my uh, honorable mention would be this gentleman off of Blue Note uh, label. His name is Gregory Porter. Mm. He is like a uh, Al Jarreau, Nat King Cole kind of I noticed thing. you he, didn't mention me, but okay, I'm going to oh, let you yeah, have yeah, it. I, I, it. Uh -uh, no, don't do it now. No, don't I, do it now. We could only have six. <laughs> And I'm that would be playing. biased. I'm just playing. I'm kidding. Gregory Porter is awesome. And he wears this big hat like we would wear when we were kids that flopped down. Oh, okay. And he, he has the, 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 the ruffled shirt on and everything. And people never talk about the hat. Like, dude, I love your voice, but what's up with the hat? Uh -huh. Nobody ever talks about that. But an awesome voice. Awesome voice. So those are my top five with my honorable mention. What you got, Dre? My number one is Carmen Miller. See uh, That's my number one. <laughs> So I'm just I'm I'm putting it out there now. That's all I'm saying, hey. You did that. You hey, did that. Look, let me tell you something. The girl can go. She has a beautiful voice. Anita <laughs> Baker, the songstress. No. Oh, stop. Well, girl, don't do me like that. Don't hey, you dare. My number two <laughs> is Phyllis Hyman. Ooh. Okay. That's my number two. Yep. Phyllis Ooh. Hyman. That's my Ooh. number two. Phyllis, Phyllis Hyman is my number two. Love her. Mm. Loved her from day one. Mm -hmm. Just the songs. I don't know if I'm a sentimental type guy or mm. what, but I just, I love all her songs. Well, I mean, she was a depressed type singer. You're a depressed type guy, so yeah, it makes and, sense. And that's probably what it is. I get it. I get that's, it. that's what it is. I, but but I don't think that she got the dude that she no, was. No, not at all. That, mm. that, she was that amazing. She, yeah, that she should have gotten, and her life was, you know, taken real early because i'll never forget real quick i was in dc i remember they were doing a show at um the apollo with the whispers and i heard it on the news and i was just like i was devastated, devastated. i was oh, devastated God. yeah i was devastated yeah. so mm -hmm. phyllis hyman is number one I, I i i could sing the songs but this this box here it oh. doesn't work well you don't want me to sing no, you know what? Here's the thing. <laughs> you could. God. Yeah, hey. Bet you my you know, golly who no, I see, uh, no. uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> You're the one that I've been That's waiting a for. Song. Mm. She redid it. You know what? This is why I love God. Prince God, too. God, God it keeps too. you humble. He's Dre. Is good. <laughs> eight wits, a good looking guy, but he don't have it all. He can't sing. His voice is terrible. Thanks, is, is Stop it? <laughs> You know and you know what exactly it is, what you know what I'm saying? Hey, let me, let me tell you something. Somebody told me one time, they said, you only have hit one note in your whole life, and it sounded halfway decent. I was like, I know. And my brother told me that. Rest in peace. Oh my my second one is the opposite of Prince, which to me is Michael Jackson. You know, uh, that's my second one. The Jackson 5, Gary Michael Indiana. Jackson, all together. I'm going to keep that, that, that good. And, you know, I came up in 70s. So OJ's mm -hmm. my fourth. Yep, yep, yep. Um, we'll go over to jazz now. Kenny G. Kenny G. Kenny, that's that's oh, one. No, yeah, no, 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 yeah. No, no. Kenny G. <laughs> Kenny, okay, Kenny, you know Kenny Gorlick. 
I'm, I'm, I'm okay. not even entitled, and I'm not going to debate who your top five are. Yeah, well, you, you are. Ever go to this, no, I'm not, we're just having a conversation. <laughs> you, you, but you shut me down. How long have we been knowing each other? We can't. But too long. <laughs> how long we can't have a, have, have, have a conversation? And, and friendly. Okay. okay. Go ahead. <laughs> well, there, there, there are two stations on satellite that play jazz. You got your, it's like a, I don't even know the name of it. It's like a contemporary jazz. Right. And then you got real okay. jazz. Well, I know. You got you, real you jazz. You got traditional. Kenny right. G will never be played on real jazz. He's contemporary. Wow. But okay. what I'm saying is, what, that, so was not, that, that was not the discussion. The He's discussion, what my favorite was. But favorite. I challenge your favorite. Well, you really? can't challenge you what challenge I like. His- what? Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can't <laughs> challenge what that. I what I okay, like. Okay, go on. That's that's go that's on. that's that's who I like. On the that was my home, era. I'm gonna put on some jazz for you. Okay, the, whatever. I mean, I listen to jazz all the time, but okay, the Whispers. That's one of my groups. All right. From the I'm an '80s guy. You okay. know, and honorable mention. I've got two or three. I'm gonna go real quick. I'm not gonna get into Angela Bofield, which is almost like a knockoff of Phyllis Hyman. Mm-hmm. Depressed. No, she had a stroke. So no, I said she was a depressed no. singer. I liked her. It was okay. They were kind of love songs, I man. Like oh, I love both of those. Okay, so here we go. So Jeff Lober, Fusion. That's Fusion. Mm-hmm. Um, Luther. Okay. I'll throw Ice Cube in. Uh, amazing. Right, Luther. And, and then and then I'll throw in DMX. Oh, oh. let the dog okay. out. Roof, okay. Roof. I didn't know we had an honorable let mention me, for rap music. Let me yeah. get eclectic Don't. on you guys because I am also a rap fan. <clears throat> Going from. Five to one. Number five is Tupac for me. He told street stories yeah. that rang true to my generation. Um, so your generation f- is violence. And over the number pocket. four is Common, who yeah. tells street stories that still ring true to mm-hmm. my generation. Number three, Def Leppard. I grew up in the age of hair metal, and I love it. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> VH1. Number two, U2, because I love their activism and I also love the songs and the meaning behind them. And they're like, you know, that's my thing. Number one is the greatest band in the world. I already said Steely Dan. I'm afraid you're wrong. That would be Duran Duran. I, I am I a I am a 25 year oh. plus Duranny. I have followed them across the eastern seaboard and they are the best musicians hands down in the entire world period. I have period. never ever you listened are to one. Well rounded with no, your yeah, music. Yeah, she is, but I have never listened Honorable to one. Honorable mention. Duran Duran song. You talking about her name Prince. is Rio and she dances on the sand. You're talking you about just listened to one like a, a Karen, apparently you have. No, I'm apparently just, you have. I mean, I'm Apparently I'm you have. They defined a generation and have transcended music the throughout reflex. the years. The reflex come undone. I'm talking about even today with Nile Rodgers and Janelle Monet. Pressure off. Come on, it was a song of the summer. Are you playing with me? For real, for real. Don't play. Okay. okay. Don't play. <laughs> well, that sounds good. That sounds yeah. great. Um, so I tell you what, um, we should be joined with with our guest uh, Michael Dean from Podcast Juice, and he, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, his podcast, he's a longtime podcaster. His podcast focus, focuses on music, but primarily the music of not Duran Duran, not Angela Bofield, but Prince. <laughs> Love him. And uh, Mike, we got you on the line. I'm here. What's up? Man? My brother, what's going on? How are you today? Oh man, I'm good. You got me up early, but I love it. I'm, I'm already listening, and I'm, I want to jump in so fast. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Michael, you are in uh, Seattle, Washington, right? Yes, sir. Well, we sincerely appreciate you um, getting up this early for us. Oh wow! Yeah, you are like. <laughs> I think he's like three hours behind. Oh my god! We appreciate uh, it. it. It's, it's all good, man. I have a little baby, so she already woke me up and. Oh. So. <laughs> wow! Cool. Good. So I tell you what, Mike. A um, few questions for you. How long have you been podcasting? Uh, podcasting, man, about eleven years. Nice. Eleven years. Eleven years. Yeah. So you started when they still had like the dial in, the little rotary dial sound on the thing. <laughs> well, I'm not that far back. Right. <laughs> but uh, it's been a while. Yeah. Was, I mean, I remember. Uh, 
like a lot of people getting online when it was like AOL. Oh, uh, <laughs> right. serve. With a little you know, running man. Oh, my God. <laughs> but uh, probably just a little after that, you know, I started podcasting. So, yeah, it's been a minute. So you did everything like in a in a Wayne's World kind of fashion, where it was in your basement, or how did you how did you how did you start doing the podcast? Uh, you know, I got to shout out this guy named uh, Scott Sigler. He is an author, and he's uh, he started podcasting, uh, doing his books. Mm. Nice. Uh, now he is you see his books all over in Barnes and Nobles, whatever. But he was one of the first guys. I'm sorry if my phone's cut. He was one of the first guys that I noticed doing it. And I saw that, and I was like, yo, I got to, this is something we got to do. So my best friend, uh, Mr. Tobias, we are huge Prince fans. Nice. So, and so. Uh, we would always talk about Prince. Mm-hmm. And so it was just like, you know, I was like, man, you know what? And I had an office at the time, so I was like, dude, just come over. And I already had, like, equipment because I'm you know, a musician doing music stuff. And I was like, let's just talk, talk about some Prince stuff, and let's just put it out and see what happens. So, so what made you think that this would be the 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 lane for you as far as like discussing all things Prince? What made what made that click for you and your audience? What do you think? Well, it's easy because at the time and, and sort of as there is now, how I first got online was I was searching for some information about Prince. Oh. And, I, and I found, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but there was a group on CompuServe. It was a discussion group. Oh all, my God! Uh, alt music prints, you know, a newsroom or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, there's such a strong community of Prince fans. Here's this, you know, this is like, man, I found like the Holy Grail or something. All this information. <laughs> so I immediately, you know, tried to learn how to do a website. Oh wow! I okay. put it up, and that was called Players World way back, you know, like ninety something. Back when and Black all, Planet was popping. Oh, wow. I remember <laughs> that. Before, yeah, it was actually I remember before that. Black Planet. And wow. they didn't accept yeah. me. Oh, wait, what? Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and, and off the strength of doing the site, and I was kind of getting active, and there was a, some very early Prince websites that a lot of fans sort of remember, and I was always on there. And so one day, I'm real quick, I'll say this, one day, I got an email from Prince. Shut up. Wow. Oh, seriously? Wow. No, very serious. No, he is really <laughs> like, a, apparently he's really connected to his online community, yeah? Yes, and this was like before he had his first website. So the basic point of his email was it was to me and a few other guys and come to this chat thing I'm going to set up and I want to talk to you guys about helping me create a website. Wow. And that whole thing spawned, if you remember hearing about it, it was called Love for, Love for One Another, which was his first Yes. Yeah, so that's how that kind of came. I ended up backing out of it, but it was just an honor that, you know, he didn't even acknowledge who I was and blah, blah, blah. Amazing. So man. that's how I knew well, to do the podcast. I already knew it was the audience there for it. But when did you discover the 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 interest, the major interest in Prince? What 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 was it? What album? What I mean, what happened? How did you look? I want to do this strictly Prince. What When did he come into your life to musically to yeah. make you want to uh, yeah I would say it was um it was probably 1981 I you know I live in Seattle Washington and going back into the 80s you know music was so uh, regional it was some songs that you know never made it to Seattle or certain movements that were made only being LA or different mm. parts of the country so when I went to visit some family in Houston Texas uh Fifth Ward, actually, in Houston. Uh, my first cousin, they was blasting this dude named Prince. It was, I think it was Dirty Mind or Controversy was out at the time. And mm-hmm. I had no clue who Prince was. Really? <laughs> I was like, what is this mess? But it, it was playing it like, you know, kids would play, I don't know, Drake or Little Wayne today. I mean, right. every car went to a house party and they just had it on repeat. You know, it was Dirty Mind Controversy. I was like, okay. And then when I came back home, and I never heard of it, 1999 came out. You kind of heard a little bit of the hits. You know, MTV kind of started the plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went back to Houston again. And a funny story, uh, my cousin had the controversy poster on her door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember the controversy <laughs> poster. <laughs> and I went down there with my grandmother, and she came in and saw that poster on the wall. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that was some shoe. You was naked looking at Prince. <laughs> Chris was, was naked. Like, yeah, I was, and I didn't know who you know. I didn't really know who he was. But I was just like, whoa, you know. And so I started sort of being a slow sort of okay. I sort of heard of this guy. So, but you know, the other thing was uh, the time oh, it was yeah, really yeah. popular at that time. So right. I I heard of their stuff before, and and my auntie was blasting. She said, you got to hear this. So I, I sort of knew some of that. So anyway, where it really jumped off for me, like a lot of people, Purple Rain. Oh, yeah. uh, when that came out, my cousin from Houston moved here, and she was like, we got to go to the record store and, and get a proper rain, and the Tyrant album's coming out. And I was like, what? You know, I don't want to get that. You know, this is how I was talking back. I don't want to get that faggot stuff, man. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I, 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 I was straight hip-hop at the time. I was Run DMC, all that. You know, I was King Rock. But what? she picked up that record. I listened to it, and I had to stop hating. I was like, Okay. That's kind of dope, man. I was like, all right. And I started getting into it. Saw the movie. It was a wrap. <laughs> I, now I want to talk to you a little bit at, near the end of the interview about Purple Rain and what you're doing, Purple Rain related. But yeah, that is that is that is cool. Um, and and I know my introduction to Prince was right around. Mm, you know what? I think it was uh, the uh, what's the album with for uh, Sexy Dancer for you for you. Okay. Uh, I was at a talent show, which I was singing in the talent show. And yes, that is all of the Full Circle group singing on that intro song. Ah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I was on the talent show and this guy was dancing. And uh, he was dancing off of Sexy Dancer. And I was like, what is that song? <laughs> that is the coolest song I ever heard. Really? My mama uh, yeah. introduced me to Prince. My mama introduced me to Prince um, with I Want to Be Your Lover. Back in the day, that was the first time mm -hmm. I heard it. She would play that record, cleaning my cleaning the house and everything. And ever since then, I have always been a Prince fan. The musicianship, the vocals, all of that. He is the the total package when it comes to music. And I mean, in terms of lifestyle, he, he's an enigma. So that's kind of the cool thing. But yeah, it came very early. Like you know, I can't even remember how old I was. I was probably like four years old listening to her play. You know Prince records. Wow. Yeah. Now, hey, wait, I gotta stop you, Michael Dean. You, you, this, this, the, one of our uh, the, uh, the host here. He's shaking his head and everything. Every time uh, we say something about <laughs> Prince, he's shaking his head because he's a he's a Michael Jackson fan. Uh, uh, hey, I'm not mad. I'm like not Michael mad Jackson. at that. I, but but you know what? I'm just letting you guys talk, and I don't want to be disrespectful or anything. And you know, I mean, he's okay. He's just he wasn't one of my favorites <laughs> because he wasn't. He wasn't. And I guess it was the clothes. I guess I just wait, I looked at wait, that. Wait. I, I don't know. Yeah. And, if, and, if, and I told him if anybody should have been walking around acting like Prince, this should have been you. No. No, I don't know. You look like Andre Simone. Quit playing. About? He said Andre Simone. Yes, he did. He went there. Oh, oh my God. But, but I will say this. When I had the old thick mustache. You say you look like a member of the family. They they said they, they said I look like Prince with a yeah, thick mustache. Yeah, background. So, you know, Prince just throw somebody who right. look like me in the background. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he's not talented. Don't get me wrong. Just would not be on my list. And I'd probably be the only one that would say that. You probably would. And I yeah. would say because, and I know that, Michael, you probably will agree with me because when you look at an artist who over the last 40 plus years has not only adapted to trends but created them and has been on the cutting edge of what music does, Prince is the prototype, yes? Oh, oh yes, I'd agree with that all the way, yeah. I mean, and, he's, uh, he's a musician, you know what I'm saying? Even if... I get what he's saying, though. I, I was a huge, I'm not going to say was, I am a huge Michael Jackson fan. I was hardcore Michael before I really understood what Prince was. Mm -hmm. And I love Michael. I think, Michael, in my opinion, Michael Jackson is the best entertainer, period. But, I, I I'll go, I'll go, I'll but, go but, with that. But like I I'll said, I'm, I don't look at it from a music standpoint because I'm not, you know, I, I, you guys know better than I do in terms of him being great and his music and everything. And I'm not... I'm not denying that or saying anything. I'm just saying for me, 
Michael Jackson. I, I didn't have time for both. Oh, Got Lord. Yeah, usually that's what we do. You know, it's yeah. like either, it's either or. It's either or. Yeah, yeah right. that's what it was for <laughs> right. me. So territorial, man. Right. right. I did last year, I recently did a, um, well, actually earlier this year, I did a uh, Prince versus Michael Jackson party. Oh, I remember that. Where my band right. played the music of Prince and the music of Michael Jackson. Right. I ain't going to say Prince right. did win. Right. He did. I believe it. Wow. And I'm going to tell you why. Because those songs are the ones that like define moments in your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Michael Jackson has songs that go right. along with the generation as well. They're right. very, very anthemic, but right. Prince is personal. You take right. a Prince but, but, song but personally. You know, right, yeah. and, and I agree with you, but for me is I followed it from the Jackson 5 oh, to my, you see what I'm right. saying? So I just kind of right. followed that whole thing. Yeah, Got yeah. You know? right. So Now, Mike, let me ask you a question. This is a hard question. What is your favorite out of all the albums that this brother has put out? What is your favorite Prince album? Uh, I've been asked that question many times. <laughs> I'm sort of ready, but I would say this, 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 I have to say this too. One, there's, there's the one that means something to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask you, why is it your favorite? Go on. Yeah. It, it personally means something to me. It may not be what the one people would say. Hey, this is the Prince album. But for me, uh, the Love Sexy album. Love oh, Sexy. Oh, I love Love Sexy. Yeah. That, that album. I wish you had been. Mm -hmm. Hit me at the time. I was like. So ready and not ready for it when it came out. But mm. when I started to really understand what he's talking about and sort of what his journey was doing that record, nice. It meant a lot to me as a teenager, kind of dude. Like that's okay. Now, 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 my favorite one, and and, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have the Prince doll for, from Purple Rain. <laughs> Here we go. I have the guitars. I have the miniature oh. guitars. I have comic books. Remember mm -hmm. when Prince I remember the comic, the comic book. Wow. Um, I, I have those things. And to tell you the truth, when I ran into Michael Dean, I was like, this guy got doing a podcast on Prince. I can do that. <laughs> Trust me. I cannot do a podcast on Prince like this brother does it. Nice. He he knows. He, he, has, he has opened the door, a plethora of material on Prince. Plethora. Mm. But uh, I'm going to go over here to my favorite one. My favorite album is Around the World in the Day. Ah. Mm. I, I, I tend to think that, okay, what's the hit? What is everybody playing with Prince? I go on the, the, the B side of that mm. because this is special. And around the world wasn't people, a lot of people was like, ah, I love that whole album. Yeah. Seriously, don't look at me like that. I, I'm just saying, man. I'm, I'm just here. It. I'm just here listening. Do you have a I'm, favorite Prince I, I album? I don't, but I'm just listening. Really? I don't. I'll tell you the one that could, he could drop this album tomorrow and it would be exactly as relevant as it was the day it was made. And it's been that way for the last 20 years. Sign of the times. Tell me yeah, I'm lying. That's a good concert. Tell it's me I'm lying. Good. I mean, li literally word for word in terms of what was going on in the world space, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that the song itself, but also the album, it's like a blueprint politically, emotionally, all that. It really is. Wow. Well, if I have yeah, one, that, I'll, if I have okay. one, I'll just say Lil Red Corvette. That's it. That's what I'll say. That's not the name of the <laughs> album. The well, well, I'm saying the song, but I, but but the thing is, it's only one song, so I can't well, give right, you an album. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> you could, all this time we're talking, you could have looked it up on the phone. <laughs> I, I wasn't interested. <laughs> okay. Michael Dean. Now, I got another question for you. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that Prince emailed you, which is awesome. I would walk around with that print it out in my pay, in my wallet. I did make a shirt people. with it in the email. Yeah. <laughs> but besides Prince, who have you had the pleasure of talking to uh, and or affiliated with Prince besides Prince? Uh, yeah. Uh, one of the, in my opinion, one of the best interviews I've done uh, shows we had, we had Andre Simone on. You, and, uh, yeah, hey, Whitney Petty. He's you right here. The <laughs> the yeah, we had your boy on, right? <laughs> yeah, you guys are real funny. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't tell us hey, you hey, already hey, knew it. Hey, Michael, thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Wow. I, uh, I remember you talking about that, and I was like, I got to go back and find that. But you you, uh, you interviewed Andre Simone. Cool. Was there any hard feelings? What kind of insights did he give you? Uh, man, first of all, Andre, one of the coolest brothers you're going to, you know, coming out. For me, here's the thing. For me, that print stuff. I read so much about it and listened to the music. You sort of put these people on a, somewhat of a pedestal. You just don't think they're necessarily human. Mm. Andre, he, he, Andre humanized them for me. Oh, very good. Uh, you know, he basically gave me, I think, three hours of his time. 
Oh, really? And just told stories. You know, took us all the way back to when it was just when they first met. You know, how they met, how their fathers met each other. <laughs> took me to when you know the fame started coming in. Uh, you know how Andre's mom took Prince in. They live like brothers. Mm. Took took us to an emotional point where Andre's and Prince wasn't really fucking with each other for a while. Mm. And and how Andre's mom was in the hospital. And Andre walked into the elevator and there was Prince who he ain't seen in years. And they you know got their stuff together. Uh, he really just broke a lot of stuff down. He told us stories about the Rick James tour. Rick pulling a gun on him and just wow. all this crazy oh, stuff. You I can see that. Yeah. Wow. Um, but but Prince, as we both know, it it seems to me that he can be a little territorial, and it seems to me that he would be the type of guy when we part ways. There's a contract here. <laughs> Don't talk about me. Don't say nothing about me. Don't talk to anybody who knows me. You have to purify so really, yourself in Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> I'm really surprised that, that, that uh, because he keeps everything so sealed. And well, really well, you know what? I, I should think that, but, you know, the other person we had on the show, which was a real good interview, was before Andre. We had Prince's sister. Uh, wow. Said, Did you? On the show. And she talked about, you know, family business, not in a bad way, but, you know, in terms of, you know, she went through a whole drug thing and a struggles of that and how it was Prince who said, yo, you got to stop. I'm going to wow. get you where you need to be. And, you know, she just really broke it down. What the family thought about the success. What did the family feel like when Purple Rain happened? You know, what was the relationship with her brother? You know, a strong relationship. I mean, she still works, you know, works in the organization to this day. That's awesome. Wow. So we've wow. had people that's really close to him, like personal people, not like protégés. Okay. Oh, nice. That he's allowed to come on. And there's another person who came on, Who how I met Taika, who's actually uh, a friend of Prince back in the day, but her and Taika became really close. And those two were trying to set it up where I was going to interview Prince. It didn't happen, but that person put me up on so much game and a lot of different stories, and she unfortunately passed away. But there's a lot of personal people that he knows Wow. that I think he sort of just allowed. Say, you know what? Oh, that dude is cool. That person's cool. Go ahead, go on there, or whatever. So, I have a quick question um, about what's going on now, as far as his uh, stance with the internet. I know that he's mm -hmm. kind of had like a uh, adversarial relationship with uh, the streaming services and things like that. How do you guys feel? How do you, what what does that do to a Prince fan when it comes to getting access to the music back? Or what do you think? What, what do you think his motivation was that? Well, I think Prince. You know, Prince is old school. You know, you just gotta remember that. You know, he's an old school cat from the Midwest, and we're talking about some millennial type of situations. When you know, like my uncle and them, they're not really up on all of that Spotify. You know, I mean, they just. You know what I'm saying? You know how some of the older people look at it. Yeah. So right. he sort of has that sort of thought process on it, which I'm not mad at. But I think for him, his whole thing is I want to get paid for my work. Absolutely. You know, I'm not allow and he should. Absolutely. Companies, right. Right. I'm not going to allow these companies to, to build off the empire based off of the stuff that I've done. You know, it's That's funny. Right. As a musician, I, I, I released um, some music myself and to the streaming services and all that stuff through different sources or whatnot. And do you realize that you get point zero 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 one percent of every song sold when it comes yeah. to like a 99 cent cut or a dollar cut you are so far removed from any type of money that comes from a streaming service so i can kind of relate to what he's saying there is that protocol is that it's, just across the board that's the norm is it yeah yeah that's that's true okay. yeah it's across wow. the board you know i think with a prince fan though so my stance would be you know what i already got the music mm. so it doesn't hurt me because i already even bought all the albums i'm invested i see the value in what he's doing so i have no problem with it you know the whole thing with the title you know that he hooked up with jay-z and them i applaud that i'm mm. like that's what we're supposed to do exactly first of all just on a you know you know I go there but on a black level black people man business who's supposed to entrepreneurial oh you got something going on okay Let's 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 break bread together. Right, mm -hmm. right. My dynasty, exactly. Let I me like take that. yours, yeah. top it up, and let's do business. So I'm not mad at that. There's a lot of people that was hating on Jay Z, 
hey, I would rather prefer our, you know, kings of industry be the ones to uh, benefit off the work than, say, Steve Jobs or, or some of these guys, God bless them. They don't care about music. They're not in it for the music. But, but, it. but we have to have, we, excuse me, we have to have more that, that does that, you know. They, we have for to sure. have more that does that and, and, you know, to get us on the right track. Now, Mike, I got another question for you. Oh, go ahead. Um, how did you feel about your uh, being a fan, longtime fan of Prince, and you know the music and going through all that? How did you feel when the most sexualized exotic singer became a Jehovah's Witness? Did that affect you? Did that change? Did you notice a change in the music? Uh, well, I noticed a change in the music which I'm not mad about because I feel like uh, men, women, but men, you're supposed to grow. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, I, I would have a problem if he was saying the same crazy stuff he was saying back in the day today. Right. But that's that would be sells. a problem to me, right? Because I was like, you're a grown man. You can't be doing that's a good the point. things you did as a child. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. That, if that he, if he made it. like soft and wet tomorrow, you'd be... <laughs> I'd be like, mm, yeah, that's not for your lane. You know, you did that already. Oh, but, but in terms of the I, we, go on. Yeah. Well, I was saying, in terms of the ideology of Prince, you know, and the things that he talks about, uh, again, I applaud that too. Whether I agree with what he's talking about or not, because I like artists who have something to say, and sometimes what they say may challenge us. Mm -hmm. So when he went into Heavy Jehovah Witness, you know, there's an album called the The Rainbow Children. Yeah, oh, one I like of my it. favorite yeah. albums. A lot of people don't like that because of stuff he's talking about. But hey. Maybe I don't want to, which I love. Maybe I don't want to hear about NWA talking about killing niggas. But right, right. It, it's the same sort of thing. He's talking about something. At least what he's talking about is, you know, maybe helping you save your soul or, you know, giving you a different idea, something to talk about. Okay. So I wasn't mad about that. You know, as a child, I was Joe Witness. I'm so saying here. Know same here. Of that that journey. And Michael Jackson was Joe Witness. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. you know, a lot of us go through certain certain things in life, and it's just interesting to watch a person's journey. So I didn't yeah. have no problem. With now, speaking of growing and uh, the changes, um, uh, my, my wife and I were, were both huge Prince fans. That's how we met, exchanging bootleg uh, Prince stuff and all that other kind of stuff. And she said, uh, ask him what he thinks of Prince's last uh, efforts. I believe this is his 33rd and 34th studio album. Yes. And those would be... Uh, Art of Artificial Age and Hit and Run. What do you think of those two? Uh, I'll say this. I, I'm not mad at I feel like I'm an apologist for this, but I'm not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I understand why he did those records. He's trying to appeal to younger people of today and the musical styles that they have today. And if you go and look back at Prince over the years, he's always done that. He's always taken whatever style was popping at that time and pulled it in and did his version of it. So he's just doing the same thing now. The problem for a lot of people is that some of the music today sucks. So he's like, why would you want to <laughs> whack music? But I get it, you know, so it's not my favorite stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm here for the long haul. <laughs> so Cats is going to do stuff that's sometimes hidden. Sometimes mm -hmm. ain't hidden. But that's mm -hmm. all right. There's a, there's a couple of little jewels in there that I'm like, okay, that's the cut. You know, I, I was gonna say, that. Hidden Run has a couple of have a couple of hidden jewels. It does. It yeah. does. <laughs> you know, a couple no. little jams on there, but it ain't for everybody. And and I, I think to me, I love the the new album more so because again, it was a business move. It was a, it was a way to say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna get paid up front from this record. So it don't matter if it don't sell. I'm doing business with my brother, Mr. J C over here. Mm -hmm. Let's get this. Right. So I can respect right. that. Right. What happened to the, the concert? Because I remember listening to your show. I could have sworn somebody said the hit, run, and pause concert. Something to that degree. What, what, what happened to the hit and run you know, concert? Did you go? The hit and run concert? Remember the last mm -hmm. thing that Prince came out? He was doing these. He just did these concerts. He oh. did like the smaller venues that. Yeah, yeah. I think, he, you know. Yeah, the, the hit and run tour, that's what Prince is calling. I just yep. think it's Prince is like, you know what, hey, uh, I need to get paid. Uh, go book a show <laughs> here this month or something. I don't think it was more of a traditional type of tour. It was sort yeah. of a thing like, you know, we need to, you know, obviously get overhead and 
we need to keep playing. We got to keep people paid. And he's just getting a couple million every show. Yeah, let's go over here and do a show. And right. Maybe another month or so we go over there. So I don't think it was a traditional tour. Per se. Okay. One of the things that yeah. I love is that he always goes to Detroit. So, yay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, just to give you some more info on Michael Dean and uh, the uh, podcast Juice, what he he's done, not only talking about Prince and Prince's music, uh, with some other talented gentlemen on his panel. He also is doing the uh, Purple Rain Podcast Minute. Really? And what they do, they take Purple Rain, minute by minute, and they have a show on it. Interesting. And, 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 and talk about it. May, it may be like a 15-minute segment. Nice. And, <laughs> right. uh, Interesting. It, 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 it's, it's the coolest thing. And uh, I, I, I mean, I was waiting for Purple Rain. I mean, I love uh, Purple Rain. And uh, I, I got an interesting story on, on that Purple Rain thing. Now, now, talk to me about the podcast minute, and then I'll tell my story after that. But talk to me about the okay. podcast minute. Yeah, actually, uh, I got the idea. Uh, so I'm, I'm an actual super nerd type of dude, too. So I'm into, like, Star Wars and Force Awakens coming out. Uh, and there was a guy <laughs> that were doing the Star Wars, the Star Wars minute. And I was like, what the hell is this? You know, I was like, oh, they're breaking it down. So I said, okay, you know what? How can I flip that for my people? What up? <laughs> so, so I was like, you know, do the Purple Rain Minute, you know? Right. Um, so essentially, we watch the movie a minute at a time, and then we talk about it. Um, you know, the challenge is to make great content, right, for each minute of a movie. And essentially, that movie is, what, 100 and something odd minutes? Mm -hmm. It's going to be 100 and some odd episodes, right? So... It's fun, though. Uh, uh, my co-host on that particular show is Ida Belly, mm -hmm. Bella. Excuse mm -hmm. me. She's very animated, very fun, and uh, we're bringing guests to co-host with us all the time. I love and it. It's just a blast to do. You know, again, we always talk about that movie anyway, and if you really look at it, as with a lot of movies, if you just look at for one minute of footage, a lot of times you're going to see so many funny little things. Little that flubs in that, yeah. Before. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's, there's one little part real quick. Uh, there's a early on in the Purple Rain, the part where Prince uh, is doing Let's Go Crazy, and there's a, scene, there's a little first cut of him riding a motorcycle past uh, First Avenue yeah. during when the song is playing. If you look at that minute, and I never noticed it, there's a person standing there, and they throw glitter at Prince. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's hilarious. That wow. so, yeah, was like, this is hilarious. Wow. <laughs> That's freaking so, hilarious. My I, so this, that's why we do it. Wow. It was funny. See, every time I think about, I love Purple Rain, but I got a bad memory on Purple Rain. I uh, I remember a uh, good friend of mine, we were dating or whatever, good friends, whatever. And she's like, okay, we got to go see Purple Rain. I'm like, okay, great. I've been waiting for this. We've been waiting, waiting, waiting. Purple Rain comes out Friday. And I was like, look, I can't get the car Friday. Can you just wait till Saturday? And she was like, okay, cool. So I got my parents' car Saturday. We're sitting up there at Miles Drive in in Cleveland, Ohio. And the movie comes on. We're jumping and getting all excited and screaming. And then as the movie is about 20 minutes in, she said, oh, God, look at this part. You got to look at this oh, part. Oh, she already seen She's it. She's like, you're going to love this part. <laughs> oh, like, snap. Dude, I was crushed. Oh, it's hilarious. I was bold. crushed. That is hilarious. You couldn't even wait. <laughs> it, I, I, and it ruined the rest of the movie. And I'm just she sitting did. up there. And wow. she didn't tell you. Didn't eat my hot dog. Didn't eat the <laughs> oh popcorn. Oh, my God. Wow. That's, that's hilarious. That's so wrong. Wow. Oh wow. my God. I'll tell you what, I, the, I love the concept of Purple Rain Minute podcast because I distinctly remember when I first started having been able to drink, old enough to drink, um, I was watching the, uh, the VHS of Purple Rain mm -hmm. and I had a very deep and intellectual conversation about how much Apollonia paid for or didn't pay for cab fare. <laughs> we were incensed uh -huh. that it took thirty-one dollars and what? Talk about this. Thirty-one dollars and seventy-five cents, or something like that. It was insane, right. was what it was. Right. Wow. So we talked about that. That's funny. <laughs> and I, I absolutely remember being just really pissed off that a cab cost that much. <laughs> in the freaking eight, that was in um, the movie itself was in the eighties. But even we were pro this was probably ninety something, and we were still mad that a cab cost that much in the freaking 80s. <laughs> wow. So we got to get ready to move on to the rest of the show as we can start wrapping up. But um, 
Carmen, you know what time it is? Oh, do I get is? to get my top five? Yeah. Oh, that's you oh, didn't you know even what? ask him for his top I five picture. Okay, oh, yeah. we know number one is Prince. Okay, so what's your top four behind him? Sure. So I have these in order. So I'm going to start from five up. Okay? He's he uh, want to be in our show. That's cool. Go on. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, so number five, for me, Rafael Sadiq. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Yep. He's That's good. my dude. You know, Tony, Tony, Tony. Air uh, appearance to the time. Albums, <laughs> all of the stuff he's produced. His hand is on so many joints and songs that we know. Yeah. He'd be like, oh, he did that? Amazing. Me, he's one of the greatest contemporary songwriter producers in the game, pardon us. Yes. Uh, number four, uh, Sly Stone. Yes, uh, yes. Again, you know, one of the guys who is a trendsetter, he wasn't necessarily following nobody. He was doing the, the, the groundwork and laid the foundation. You wouldn't be no prince, wouldn't be a lot of cats uh, based their stuff off. He was the first Black rock star. True. Love Go it. Banks did a lot of stuff right? with Larry Graham. You know. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Larry Graham came out of that. Uh, all right. Number three, Michael Jackson. Uh, there you go. I, there we go. Michael, <laughs> my, my man. <laughs> Michael is the dude. I'm surprised. Jackson Five, on up. No one can touch what he started as a child, and as an adult, changed the game. I'm not, you know, that's my guy. I'm Michael, I, I just, all, all I want to say is I, I, I felt left out with Prince. Thank yeah, you. I feel, I, 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 I didn't have anything to say. <laughs> no, he's I, talking. Yeah, okay, I'm good. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> uh, we, we, we there, man. All we right, there. my man. Uh, all right, number two is a personal favorite for me, uh, Mr. John Williams. Uh, John Williams okay. is the conductor of many of the themes. Uh, symphonic music that you've heard of music over the years. Uh, my first record that I ever got in my life was the soundtrack to Star Wars. The mm -hmm, first movie. Mm -hmm. uh, blew my head open musically. I'm a musician, done albums. A lot of my stuff is based off of what I heard in there, the rhythms. Nice. That music to me is so emotional. I listen to it to this day. All the stuff that he does. He's a master composer, in my opinion, master songwriter. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, number one <laughs> is Prince. Uh, and for me, Prince is the gateway drug to pretty much all music. <laughs> um, he is a master sponge, Prince. So he has, he's that kind of guy. And you, sometimes you'll see these kind of guys in your neighborhood, all the local beat dude or that one musician cat that you know that's just, man, you're filthy. Like, you can do anything. Not all of them become world famous. Right. But Prince became world famous. And again, you can see the lineage of all the greats and everything he did to us. To me, all the Prince's greatest are the ones that he does that's based on somebody else. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Whether it's James Brown, Jimi Hendrix, Santana, uh, Stevie Wonder, or, or Sly Stone. Okay. To me, the sign of, what makes the Sign of Times album so dope to me is that to me it's essentially Prince trying to do Sly. And right. he just did it in his way. And it was filthy. So that's why I said for Prince is the number one because he's a gateway to everything else. He's probably one of the hardest working cats in the game. The fact that that guy is, what, 57 or something right now, still in the studio. Absolutely. Still rehearsing. Shit might not ever come out, right. but he's still putting in the work. I can respect that. It's amazing. I, I love his work ethic. One of the reasons I'm a fan. So there you go. That's my top five. Wow. All right. Oh, honorable awesome. mention. Honorable mention. Yep. Somebody said it earlier, Mr. Tupac Shakur. Yes. Uh huh. I'm there with you. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, have I didn't do my honorable right. mention. My honorable mention would have been the voice of our generation, Whitney Houston. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, see, yeah. But it, when you went with the rap thing, if I'm going to go with like a, 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 a grand MC best lyrics and everything for my honorable mention for rap school it would probably be will smith oh god uh, no, are you kidding uh, uh, not, 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 not krs one not, not even right not, not rock him not rock him right <laughs> not exactly. most deaf right it's exactly. a very talented wow. brother great lyricist Boy, exactly. all right <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Mike, no no Mike, Mike, so Mike, 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 don't hang up don't so hang up bro. Uh, bro don't hang up on me <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Mike. Let me let me say this. What you've done for me, even though I'm not a Prince fan, you made me think. Now, now I I, I might have to do some research on it and listen to some more music. So I appreciate that. Now, Mike, how can people oh, get in contact with you? 
uh, podcastjuice.net is the website. And, you know, I know we talk a lot about print stuff, but we've got a ton of other shows we do. Uh, there's Geeked Out. You like movies and comics and all that stuff. Awesome. There's uh, This Is What We Do, where we talk about, you know, social stuff. And we get on there and clown. Uh, you can also find shows on there called Two Nigs, United for Podcasting. It's me and another brother going head to head. We talk about everything. It gets crazy. So there's a lot of different stuff that we got going on, but definitely Podcast Juice. Dot net. Check us out. Now, the thing about uh, Mike, what we're trying to do uh, at the Full Circle, I have spoken with the group and I was just like, look, for our first guest, if it could just be some of the people that are instrumental in helping lay the foundation for the Full Circle podcast show. And uh, the gentleman we had last week, uh, African Caesar from uh, the uh, Sneaker Box is one of them, Michael Dean is another one and for the next five guests that will be people that are really instrumental in helping us to make our podcast uh as professional and uh uh just a, a well-rounded out show so uh i appreciate you mike uh, thank you so a, much a, a seasoned oh, podcaster taking the time out to be a part of our show i really appreciate it man. I appreciate it too michael Thank you. Now, we're hey, just thanks gonna for move, having me. Thank no you. problem. We're just going to move. You're, you're welcome to stay on the line with us and everything. We're just moving to the conclusion of the show, and we're going to go into the apologies. And, of course, if you have an apology, you're more than welcome to apologize for something. What is uh, your apology this week, Daryl? You know, I'm gonna, I want to apologize to my grandmothers, uh, Minerva, Minerva Miller and Bessie McCullough, who are, uh, both have uh, passed on. But I want to apologize to them because I never, uh, being young, you know, you, you look at somebody and you think that they're going to be there tomorrow. They're mm. going to be there tomorrow. And tomorrow becomes next week, next month, next year. And then they've gone on. And mm. you don't realize uh, what a gem grandparents are. Use your time wisely. Call your grandparents. Check on them. Mm. Um, you know, it's, they, they have a wealth of information. And, you know, tomorrow's not promised. That's awesome going into the holiday season as well. Um, hey, what you have an apology this I've week? Got, I, I do have an apology this week, and it's probably on the same lines as uh, Daryl. Um, I'm going to try to make it quick. I, I know I, I came home from college, and my uncle was in the hospital, and he had bone cancer, and he called, and he was like, come down and see me. And I was, you know, as a kid, I'm 18, 19. I'm like, yeah, well, I'll go see him tomorrow. I'm tired. So 12 o'clock came around midnight, and they called. They said he was in a coma, and, and, uh, and, and I, I never got a chance to say goodbye. And, mm -hmm. and to this day, mm -hmm. you know, I get teary-eyed when I think about it. Now, his name was Hubert John Gibson, and I, I get teary-eyed when I think about it because I never got that chance to say, um, you know, goodbye, and, I, you know, I apologize. Right, right. It's so well, important. So I want to ask uh, Michael, do you have an apology that you'd like to share today? Uh, how much time we got? <laughs> uh, -huh. uh, you know what? I mean, lighten it up a little bit because that's this is pretty heavy. I'm gonna apologize to TJ, <laughs> and uh, TJ was I was on the on a bus back in high school days. TJ is a fine young lady, mm -hmm. but she was she was on the more ratchet side of behavior. Okay. <laughs> What does that mean? And, what does uh, ratchet mean? You know what? We're not gonna go there. You go. You go mind your business I'm right that, now. You go mind your. Fascinating. You, it, a ratchet is a tool. Okay. <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. Right? Okay. And and so uh, I don't know what happened. We were something. I was sitting behind her and she was just talking crazy and I was like, "Don't talk to me or whatever." So she, for some reason, turns around. It's like kind of tried to slap me or slap me or something. You know. And all my boys in the back of the boat. Oh, mm. Right. There they go. I, the peer I'm a pressure. Young, yeah, I'm a young dummy, I will admit. I was like, oh, I can't let her do this to me. I pulled my penny loafer up. Let's tell you, this is back in the Michael Jackson day. My man. Penny, put my penny <laughs> loafer, came, loafer came up over the seat. Mm -mm. Hit the back. Back of the head. Wow. You run the rousey her. And you, and you got on me because I hit a girl with a. I'm going to need you never to do that. Yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, that's an apology. And, <laughs> right, right. And right at that moment, you know, everybody, oh, yeah. And I was like, no, my mama did not teach me to do this. Right. I knew it was wrong. And, but she, you know, that whole you know, ratchet behavior stopped immediately. And she just turned around and didn't say nothing. 
uh, or maybe a year later, we went to different schools. Uh, and we saw each other, like, downtown. And again, fine as hell. Oh, but wow. It was, thankfully, that was just off the bridge, and we never, but I never actually formally apologized for that. And I always felt bad about that. You didn't make her a Facebook right. friend? See there. I don't even know her to this day. I don't know. I mean, I, I need you to see, you know what? You being messy. <laughs> make him stop. Make him stop. <laughs> But I, that's my apology because that's wrong. Me as a father, as a man, that's not how we handle things. And when you look at these videos of world right, stars and all right, the craziness right. going on, yeah, we can't get down like that. So that's my apology. Got well, it. thank you so much. Um, so we're going to wrap this show up. And you can always visit us at the full cir- www.fullcirclepodcastshow.com. And all our info's there. You can also email us at fullcirclepodcastshow at gmail.com. And thank you. And remember, take a stand for something. Kumbaya is not always the way. You have an opinion, use it. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you, Mike. Oh, thank you. Uh, That's awesome, man. Take care, Mike. All right, you guys, t- thank you so much for having me on. Daryl, I'm going to holler at you a little later. But okay. Yeah, I'm going to listen to this. Thank Good you. I appreciate that, man. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Bye now. Okay, podcast. We'll see you next week. One, two, three. We out. Fine. Let's get it together. Education. Let's get it together. Marriage. Let's get it together. Politics. Let's get it together. For circle. Let's get it together. Race. Let's get it together.